In fact, God is still working amazing miracles and blessings in the lives of all of his people. But in a special way, we want to celebrate today the providence of God in working and using black American people in God's work and around the world. Now, in light of this, we want to delve a little bit deeper into the history of African Americans within the uh, history of the Seventh Adventist Church. Benjamin Baker, welcome. We're Thank very you. glad that you're with us today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. You've written a special book, and this book is entitled Crucial Moments. Crucial Moments, 12 Defining Events in Black Adventist History. Right. And uh, that's uh, quite a title. Yes. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, what do you think was the single most defining moment in the World Seventh Adventist Church relating to mission among and for and by black Americans? That's a good question, Brad. I would have to say Ellen G. White's 1891 speech to a general conference constituency. It wasn't the general conference proper. It was a select group of leaders on March 21, 1891, entitled, Our Duty to the Colored People. Okay. And in this address, she emphasized the need for Seventh-day Adventists to evangelize African Americans, which at that time were mainly uh, located in the South, okay. Southern United States. So in your view, it was this uh, clarion call on the part of one of the founders of the Adventist Church, Ellen White, for a special evangelistic initiative. Now, uh, Ben, um, may I call you Ben? Sure, sure. <laughs> uh, in the con history, con in the historical context of that message, 1891, of course, was about close to 30 years, uh, 25, 30 years after the Civil War. Reconstruction was still a very um, needed issue in, this, mm -hmm. in, the, in the United States. Um, why was that so important in the Adventist church at that time? Were, were not Seventh-day Adventists reaching out to black Americans before that time? Why was that so significant? Uh, how much time do you have? <laughs> well, we've got to make it short and sweet. <laughs> I'm doing my dissertation. I'm a, I'm a PhD candidate okay. at Howard University here in Washington, D.C. Okay. And my dissertation is treating on Ellen G. White and black people. Oh, okay. And I look at that 1865 period when, when um, black captives were emancipated. Yes to 1891, and I survey why was there such a neglect mm -hmm. of evang the evangelization of blacks in the South. Okay. Ellen G. White was speaking to this issue in 1891, and her, her speech was occasioned by a vision she was given by God. Mm -hmm. In fact, she was given several visions, but she says because of a severe illness, mm -hmm. she had actually forgotten mm -hmm. the visions, and God, uh, re-revealed to her, if you will, okay. around 1890 in St. Louis, uh -huh. uh, in a very striking vision, she says, like a, a pin of fire, huh. it was written, all ye are brethren. Right. And so from this, she uh, developed a, a, a very uh, intense, um, an intense interest uh, in uh, the Seventh-day Adventists evangelizing the blacks, and also from a man named Charles Kinney, okay. who's known as the father of black Adventism. Mm -hmm. uh, even before she came on the scene in 1891, he was uh, constantly uh, you know, trying to goad the church into uh, sending workers down south. So there was a kind of, of a convergence, if you please, of these things that were coming together. Definitely. Now, at that time, of course, the Seventh Adventist Church was very small. It had only been formally organized in 1863, which was in right. the middle of the, of the Civil War period. Uh, it, it's very interesting to me how God used the situation, I believe, of, of Ellen White and, and Kinney to, evan to call for evangelization because uh, God, in raising up the Adventist uh, movement and church in the eastern and the midwestern United States, it was primarily a white organization, a white uh, community. And this appeal for evangelizing uh, the black American people, the, the ex-slaves, mm -hmm. became a, a very, very key thing in bringing the whole idea of mission, the whole idea of diversity, 
the fact that God's uh, message applies to everybody, and it wasn't just to black Americans because it, it was a call that way, but it then opened up and really became a formative event in the life of the entire movement. That, that, that's well said. And Ellen White and others followed it up. She was, she was relentless, and this is something that very few know. Just like with the health reform vision and with the education vision, she inaugurated her, 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 her prolific agitation for the black work was inaugurated with the vision. And she was, she was relentless in, in letters, uh, talks, speeches. Uh, she, she, she raised money for the black work. And of course, her son uh, was one of the key pioneers in his Morning Star Basically, Riverboat he Evangelism. He dedicated his life to, uh, uh, to, and ministry to the black Americans in, in the southern United States. So, you, you've uh, edited another book, uh, People of Providence, Selected Quotations on Black People from the Writings of Ellen White. So, uh, why the title, People of Providence? Well, it, it's, it, it speaks to uh, the providential movings of God um, among blacks and African Americans. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason... The, the reason for Black History Month is because uh, blacks have largely been excluded from what we call winner's history, okay. which essentially says that those who won yeah. are the ones who get to tell the history. <laughs> so blacks have been excluded, but uh, from the very beginning of, even, even in Christ's ministry, right. we see uh, an African carrying his cross right. when his other disciples abandon him. Right. And then in Acts, we see Africans hearing the, uh, the Pentecostal sermon of yeah. Peter. And we see a very powerful politician, the Ethiopian eunuch. Yes. He took the gospel to Africa. And then Ellen White says, through the uh, research of John Andrews, right. that there were seven-day Sabbath keepers, uh, a whole African nation, mm -hmm. while Europe was in the Dark Ages. That's right. And, of course, they instituted the, the false uh, Sunday Sabbath. But Africans were, 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 were steadfast in their preservation of the true Seventh-day Sabbath. And so we're people of providence. Ellen White says that uh, just as verily as God freed the Hebrew slaves, mm -hmm. he freed the black, cla the black captives. Amen. One of my favorite Bible verses in the book of Acts, God has made of one blood all people. And uh, in God's uh, prophetic vision, uh, in Revelation 14, the three angels go out to every people, nation, kindred, tongue, and people. It's for everybody. And uh, praise the Lord for the role that, uh, that black Americans and uh, peoples of all nations around the world play in sharing the gospel. Thanks for being with us, Ben. Thank you. Thank you for having me.